Hello and welcome back to another future Doc House production. Let's continue our journey on hypersensitivity. Uh, we are on type two hypersensitivity and type two hypersensitivity in a nutshell is antibody mediated hypersensitivity. What does that mean? Um, isn't IgE in type one hypersensitivity an antibody? Yes, but this antibody is an auto antibody not the Autobots in Transformers, but auto antibodies. And what does auto antibodies mean? Auto antibodies means that these antibodies attack human tissue, your own tissue, your self tissue, auto self, self tissue. And this is bad, this is a bad thing. All right, and these are produced by again, B cells and plasma cells. Here we go. Here's the, uh, how this happens. Antigen, say um, the antigens can be drugs, can be um, you know um, so some drug so some drug allergies. Uh, uh, antigens can be uh, say a different type of blood in blood transfusion. Now this antigen triggers an immune response, and this immune response, okay, uh, causes antibodies to be created by these cells. These antibodies uh, are uh, cross-reactive with your own tissue, hence they're called autoantibodies. And because they're uh, cross-reactive to your tissue, they uh, bind to the FC receptors of your tissues, causing tissue damage and uh, an allergies, basically, in a sense. So that's the difference between type one and type two. Know that. All right, let's do this. So how does the auto antibodies damage your, uh, damage yourself, <laughs> damage your body? Opsonization. The antigens can cause opsonization of the cells. Uh, the antigens can activate the complement system, which you will learn in immunology, uh, and, uh, and in turn recruit neutrophils and macrophages that will damage the cells, uh, your own cells. And they could also bind to cellular receptors. Like I said, uh, by binding to the cellular receptors, they can cause all these things as well as um, inhibit stuff. Uh, for example, uh, in diabetics, in diabetes, if they bind to the uh, insulin receptors, then, uh, then you have um, uh, insulin resistant diabetes. So that's, uh, that's a possibility that can happen with autoantibodies. All right, some diseases that happens. So we've got HD and B. So when you get a vignette, you're gonna get these diseases. You're gonna go, oh yeah, type two diabetes, sorry. Type two hypersensitivity, okay? And type two hypersensitivity, that's easy, I got this, right? That would be an easy question. They give you a disease, you know type, type two hypersensitivity. The more difficult questions uh, usually relate to pathology, okay? Pathophysiology. So they're gonna give you the diseases and you're gonna, they're gonna ask you some questions about the disease, okay? Um, that's gonna be a more difficult question. Uh, but as far as immunology is uh, concerned, they're gonna only um, ask you about type two, hypersensitivity, about autoantibodies. Um, Damages can occur through these mechanisms, optimization, activation of complement system, or binding of cellular receptor, receptors. So it's not that difficult. So let's uh, briefly go through some of the, the diseases because uh, I can't teach you. Know, each one of these diseases is its own video and um, we're just gonna summarize them as much as possible. Uh, the ones that I talk about are the important diseases I would like you to uh, dive, in, dive into further after this video uh, on your own. Uh, use Wikipedia, use your books, textbooks, whatever. HDNB, hemolytic disease of the newborn, also known as erythroblastosis fatalis. And this is the where the IgG from the mother crosses the placenta and starts attacking the, uh, the antigen um, on the fetal RBCs, uh, causing hemolysis and uh, it's not very good for the child. Um, Rogam is, Rogam is usually given to the, the pregnant mother if there is uh, incompatibility of the blood. Look it up. It's a very important disease. Um, 
it, yeah, we can spend a whole, we can spend more time on it. I'm just gonna quickly go through this. Acute rheumatic rheumatic fever. I will talk about acute rheumatic fever in the video on streptococcus. So look for it in that video once it's created or uh, uh, when it is. Uh, look for it on in the library. Uh, streptococcal cell wall antigens, um, antibodies that would be used to fight the streptococcal cell wall, um, you know, uh, reacts with your heart cells, your myocardial um, cells and um, antigens. So this uh, antibody that's supposed to attack this antigen on the streptococcal cell wall also attacks the myocardial antigens, uh, damaging the cell, uh, your heart cells. Um, autoimmune ITP, uh, this basically is uh, where the antibodies um, inhibit platelets and, uh, and if you don't have platelets, then you start bleeding. So this is uh, ITP, autoimmune ITP, uh, look it up, it's quite interesting. Um, you've got transfusion reactions, blood transfusion reactions, same thing with the HDNB kind of mechanism. Um, you've got good pasture syndrome, which um, I love to mention good pasture syndrome because type 4 collagen, this is the collagen that's affected by the antibodies. And type 4, 4 is floor, floor is basement membrane, so the type 4 collagen for the basement membrane, this is what gets affected when you affect a basement membrane, say of the kidney, kidney glomeruli, glomeruli uh, and the lung alveoli, then uh, you've got diseases. Uh, this good pasture syndrome disease which um, usually affects the kidneys and the lungs uh, related to antibodies uh, um, against type 4 collagen. Myosin and gravis, you've got acetylcholine receptors where antibodies bind to the acetylcholine receptors where acetylcholine cannot bind to those receptors causing weak muscles. Look it up. It's uh, another very interesting uh, disease. Graves disease, same thing uh, with Th. Uh, with TSH receptors, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone receptors, and uh, initially you start off with hyperthyroidism, and then end up with hypothyroidism. Uh, interest, another interesting disease. Look it up. And these two that I want to mention quickly: type two insulin resistant diabetes. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, uh, where the uh, autoantibodies bind to these uh, insulin receptors, and um, insulin can't get to them. You have diabetes. And of course, pernicious uh, anemia. Um, yeah, I forgot about pernicious anemia. It's there, so look it up. All right, um, if you like this video and you want more of these videos, please click subscribe. Thank you and have a nice day. Congratulations, you are a medical student. One day, you will be a qualified doctor and your home will be a hospital or a clinic. But for now, your journey begins in the lecture hall. You will listen to countless hours of lectures and spend evening after evening in the library reading page after page of medical theory. And guess what? This is the easy part. The hardest part is retaining your medical knowledge so it's there when you need it. For example, examinations. But don't worry, we are here to help. Meet Jeff. Jeff is a good student. He goes to all his lectures. He says no to parties so he can stay late in the library. But when it's time to take the exams, Jeff freezes. The knowledge that he spent so long learning just isn't there anymore. Now meet Jennifer. Like Jeff, she is a good student. But instead of just reading textbooks late into the night, Jennifer uses technology to help her study. She also watches lectures on YouTube and practices her knowledge with QP, a medical quiz app and online platform. Jennifer likes QP because it has 10,000 practice questions covering her entire medical course. This means she can practice her medical knowledge from anywhere and in a way that actually prepares her for the exams. Because she is practicing with exam-style questions, when she takes real exams, she'll be ready. Don't be a Jeff. Begin your 7-day free trial with QP today.